How's your kids? Oh, we're live. Good. Hey, right, we're live, buddy. I'll tell you about my kids later. So, Chris Green, you're my host with the mostest today. Glad to be here, Anthony. All right, let's start the show. Let's go. Good morning, Mr. Chris Green. Anthony, so good to see you. It's good to see you. Our friend Glenn is traveling uh, around the world somewhere and for a client. So you're taking his uh, seat or actually maybe you're taking, yeah, you're taking Glenn's seat. So you host the show. I'll just sit here and ask questions. Uh, okay. Nobody answer. told me that in advance. I'm kidding. How about we'll just uh, ham and egg it. Does that work? We'll do it together. So today's very interesting. We have a gentleman from uh, France has a collection in Europe, about 18 hotels. Um, and you, as you can imagine, he's having the same challenges we are in America, especially because Europe just said they're shutting down. So as I understand it, England is being shut down um, and some other parts of the Euro uh, Europe are being shut down and some parts are being shut down hard. I mean, I, in, on my list, I have England, Spain, France, Netherlands, Scotland, all with, with pretty uh, huge spikes, some of them with the uh, most cases they've ever had. So um, that's not good for America. That's not good for the world. No, no. I mean, and we're, you know, we're really hoping that it doesn't spill over backwards. I mean, right now we got we to have the U.S. travel continue to be healthy. And we were hoping for the inbound travel. And that's not going to happen without both inbound and outbound. So, yeah. So and um, also, if you take those countries I just mentioned, England, Spain, France, Netherlands, Scotland, total combined, even though their numbers are high, total combined. They're still not as high as America's numbers. Yeah. So, so we're going about managing this uh, process um, and doing the best we can, but the numbers are still not there. And we're in September, so um, yeah. we'll get perspective from him. But how are you doing? How's your family? I know you, you, you guys were sick, but you're 100 percent better. Yeah, everybody's good. Uh, we're all good. We were able to um, keep our my, my uh, wife's parents, who are you know 70s, keep them safe. And uh, so right now, knock on wood, everything's good. I do have a family friend who got it recently it's it's i mean it is moving around down here in florida pretty good so it is, um, right? i mean it, it's it's just a challenge it's an ongoing challenge so i just pray for anybody that's how's gotten business? it or having it so how's business uh you know we've kind of settled into a groove anthony here's the thing we've kind of realized i talked to my teams well yesterday morning uh, on a system call and we have this is how it's going to be for a little while right the business travel is just not happening so we've talked about this before so whatever we can do for leisure and some of the ota stuff and then some small meetings we are seeing some small corporate meetings happening and they are like necessity we're grilling these people why are you having a meeting and they're like this is something we had to do either that or it's training that we couldn't do online so we're, we're seeing some of that but i think we're going to be I mean, my estate's running around 40% occupied, and I really think that's where we're going to be until we make some major progress towards a vaccine, um, which I think is going to be first quarter, second quarter next year. Yep. So we're all just locked in, and this, this is the way it is. Rick, I'm so sorry. Um, I don't have um, – uh, David, can you put Rick's uh, comment on? Uh, well, I hope your son recovers very quickly. Yeah, me uh, too. Yeah. Me too. How, what, what have you, what's, what's been going on, Anthony? You've been really out there kind of as our voice speaking about Congress getting busy and getting help out. That's the other thing we're waiting on is that nothing's happening with the second round of PPP and we need it. Stimulus well, needs to happen. That, well, that's what's got to happen. It's got to happen soon. And um, I'd imagine because of the election, one or two things is going to happen. It's going to happen out of, uh, out of nowhere. And all of a sudden they made a deal in the middle of the night because um, one side needs the deal for the election or they're going to say, you know what, we're going to go through the election. And we're going to figure out on the other side of the election. So America is going to be held hostage until they decide from a political standpoint what's best for their interest, not for our interest. I mean, we should have already had another, um, you know, uh, support from the yeah. government. We should have already, you know, there's a lot of things that we should have already had. But unfortunately, um, we're kind of held uh, in lockstep with um, how they're going to handle it before the election. With that said... You know, we are managing and handling our problems here in America. Let's see what's happening in Europe. So I want to bring on, he's in the green room. Uh, I want, Now, you can help me here, Chris. Do you want to try his name or you want me to try it? You go first. Alexandre de saint Barrier. Barrier. Yes. So he yes. has a collection of 18 hotels. So uh, you want to bring him in? Yeah, it's interesting. It'll be interesting to hear how they're dealing with it over there. Let's go.
Alexandra, welcome to the show. How are you, my friend? Well, uh, thanks very much for having me, Anthony. Uh, hi, Chris. Um, doing well. Thanks. If you could do me a favor and say your full name and name of your company and have, and tell us a little bit about your background, uh, how many hotels you have, and where are you currently sitting? Okay, so my full name is Alexandre de Saint-Barrière, which is uh, a French name, as you can tell. And uh, the Barrière Group is a family group, now more than a century old. And we have, as you mentioned, uh, 18 hotels as well as uh, 33 casinos and uh, more than 140 restaurants. So the situation over the summer was, um, I would say, very different depending on uh, which hotel we're talking about. So the hotels in uh, seaside resorts uh, that are traditionally um, where French people usually go uh, perform actually quite well because um, obviously the, um, it was more difficult for them to go abroad. So I think we got some customers that used to go abroad, French customers, that clients that used to go abroad for uh, in previous years and this year they they came to those destinations like Deauville, uh, like La Baule or Dinard. So we had good summer here. On the other hand, uh, Paris, where we have uh, approximately uh, with the at the Fouquet's hotel, uh, we have 70% of our um, of our guests who are from outside the Schengen area. So we are closed still as of today. Uh, we also have two hotels in the south of France, the Majestic uh, and the Grade Albion in Cannes. And uh, the summer there was also difficult because we, we didn't have the uh, usual clientele from the Middle East as, as well as the clientele from uh, Eastern Europe or South America. And so how long has your company been in business? How many, uh, your family owns, you guys run the, the, the collection mm -hmm. together. Uh, how long have you been in business? The my grandfather's uncle uh, started the company in 1912. Wow! So over a hundred years, and I would imagine in 1912, uh, through the, all the wars, the depressions, everything else, is this the worst that's ever been for your company? Well, as far as I know, and because uh, um, it's the first time in that uh, long history that we had to close down all our establishments, everything closed. And it's the first time in over 100 years. So what's going on right now in Europe? We're all hearing the news here. You know, England, Spain, France, Netherlands, Scotland, uh, a lot of them on hard lockdown, some of them on soft lockdown. Where are you in, in France? Are you guys on hard lockdown or soft lockdown? I mean, I wouldn't say we are on any lockdown at all. Okay. Uh, we have just been uh, instructed to wear our mask uh, in the streets as well as... Um, in offices where you're not alone. I'm alone in the room, so I don't have a mask. If I, I was with other people, I should have a mask. And uh, in some specific areas, uh, the restaurants are required to close earlier than usual. But uh, otherwise, um, as said the French President Emmanuel Macron, uh, the virus is gonna be here for uh, a few more months and we just have to live with it. So your restaurants, are your restaurants open right now? Yeah, yeah. Now, are you in that restaurant or is that a great green screen? No, actually, uh, we just moved. Uh, we're uh, moving into our new offices uh, this week. And uh, we thought it was a good idea for the meeting rooms to have uh, pictures in the background of some of our establishments. So you have here the um, decoration of our uh, Fouquet's Brasserie um, that's on the Champs Elysees, who is actually older than. Uh, the barrier group because the Fouquet's Brasserie is, is uh, 120 years old. Wow. So the, the, are most of your uh, hotels independent and would you, what class, like four star, five star class hotels? We have uh, only four and five stars and they are, we own uh, the buildings of uh, almost all the historical hotels. And we're very glad we own them during this time because if we had to pay rent, you can imagine it would have been much more difficult. Um, and as far as development side is uh, is going, we are obviously uh, looking at um, asset light development. But where's the where's this hotel that we're looking at right now? It's in Cannes. Wow, that is absolutely. Is that one of your five star hotels? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we have. Yeah. Uh, we have 13 uh, five stars and uh, the rest is four, star, four stars. And we're just uh, reopening uh, at the end of this week, the hotel that was uh, four star. And now we have done a 
very, very beautiful renovation, and it's going to be a five-star hotel. So your company is going to survive this. Your company, because you've been in business so long, because you own the properties, your company is going to get through this. Well, you know, I you cannot predict the future. Uh, I mean, at least I know I cannot. But I know that we survived two world wars, the Spanish flu. So those are challenging times, but I think it's important to um, remain calm, uh, never panic, because I think if, when you're panicking, you're making bad decisions, and to keep your head down until uh, until things things get better. <clears throat> Alex Alexander, so there's been a lot of talk about the luxury traveler staying pretty active. And you said you had a good summer. And looking at those properties, I can certainly understand. Um, did your guest profile change at all? Did you see any people moving up into that luxury space to be able to go to your assets and kind of get away from the cities? Um, what we, I mean, I, as I said earlier, we have hotels like in the north of France, in the west, in the south, in Paris. And um, as you understood, uh, they have different type of clientele. So um, the hotel in Paris um, is closed, but uh, we've seen for the hotel in north and the um, and the east and the west of France that um, we we don't have any hard data to to corroborate this, but uh, it is our belief that we have French guests that. Uh, used to uh, go abroad during the summer holidays and because it was more difficult for them to go abroad this year uh, we think we got some of them back into our establishments mm -hmm. makes sense yeah and until, listen until we all open up it's going to be it's going to be uh it's going to be a problem but it what happened here in america we were seeing that your numbers were going uh, down and that europe seemed to have it under control italy seemed to have it under control um, everyone seemed to have it under control, and now in the last week or two, it spiked again. Do you um, and people are saying it's the second wave. Well, to me, is it the second wave because the virus is just getting stronger, or is it the second wave because people were more lax and not wearing masks? Did you see um, a more lax a days of attitude in the last couple of weeks than you did prior to when everybody was a little bit more in lockdown and nervous, or is everybody still wearing their masks? Well, as regarding the virus, I. I, I'm no expert. I just um, obviously I think during the summer, uh, because people were previously locked down, I think it's only um, n natural. I would say that there would be some um, um, precautions that during the summer you wouldn't take. And will, will, like, will bars open? Will bars open in the summer? Yeah, like for instance, I went. I mean, you were you had areas that were much more, I would say, uh, safe than others. And I remember I went to a city in the south in the south of France, and uh, in July, and and uh, obviously in those um, in some of the establishments there, uh, the um, I would say the sanitary precautions were not there, and I managed to get the COVID in just thirty six hours. So. Mm. Wow. Wow. So you, I noticed your title is um, VP of Reven of F and B and Group Transformation. So I mean, F and B is obviously a hot topic right now. What changes have you been thinking about implementing, other than social distancing and masking? But have you done anything with uh, contactless delivery, contactless menus, that type of thing? Yeah, we we've we've done like a QR code menu. You can pay your addition with the QR, the same QR code as well. Uh, you can pay your bill. I mean, uh, with the same QR code, and uh, also we've um, put the Phuket's um, menu on um, like um, uh, delivery, like uh, food deliveries for uh, people uh, at their home. And so uh, that's something uh, we started um, after the COVID because uh, obviously we need to adapt and to the changing behavior of the consumer. But um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, and how are you dealing with your employees? Are they on layoff, furlough? I know Europe is a little bit more strict when it comes to um, that kind of stuff, laying people off. And so what have you done internally in your company for your employees? We are not laying off. Uh, we're lucky to be in a country where uh, the government has given massive support and paid the um, eighty-four percent of the salaries of uh, of uh, employees in uh, most, um, I would say, uh, industries. 
So um, that's something we, we need to remember because as French people, and I'm the first at that, uh, we like to complain, but um, we, sh we shall uh, remember that um, not all countries and not employees in all countries had the same uh, chance of having a government that provided um, 84 percent of the of the wages that that's that's amazing and that's and that's kind of what we're struggling with here in america at first um it seemed that our government was doing the right thing and now we're in basically uh in an argument over what should we do and that is basically the biggest problem in america right now is the insecurity of people whether it be about their job whether it be about putting food on the table so and what is the perception um, from Europe. And again, I know you're not an expert and I know you're not talking for all of Europe, but how do you see um, America right now? Would, if we opened up, would people start traveling again into America? What's the overall perception? And do you think whatever perception it is, do you think that would be um, uh, the, <laughs> the perception going forward? We're putting well, you on the spot, Alexander. You know, it, it, it's... All right, it's never mind. You, answered, you answered the question. <laughs> yeah, I will answer the question by saying that my answer is based on the information I have uh, at my disposal. Um, there has been a lot of um, would say tensions in the U.S., uh, not only because of the COVID. Um, the racial tension. Yes, um, among others. So I, I don't think uh, a lot of Europeans would want to... Um, travel um to the us and actually i have a few friends who are telling me that they're just they're leaving the us they're, they're leaving the us and coming back home yeah well wow, and that, that's unsettling but you know the good news is you're going to be in love with us again uh very soon and within 12 months Listen, a lot of these problems are not going away anytime soon. Hopefully, COVID will will go away soon. But the racial tension we've had in this country, you you have them in your country. We have them all over the world. Yeah, we, need, yeah. we need we need to do better, and uh, we will. And hopefully, you know, think hopefully you'll come back to America. And you know, we have a lot of people leaving oh, yeah. the cities, going going into the country. And so it seems like everyone right now is um, you know basically stepping out, and hopefully everyone will step back in. But New York, just so you know, I know there's a lot of stuff on the news about New York. Um, there's a lot going on, and I'm not going to deny that. But also, when you walk through New York, there's still business happening. Cabs are going. Ubers are going. Restaurants are open. Um, so it's still a beautiful city. I walked through Times Square the other day, and it was busy. But, um, you know, busy in Times Square is usually, you know, um, neck to neck, you know, arm to arm. Uh, it wasn't as busy as it usually is. But, you know, New York is always, is always going to be here in New York and the United States. You know, we're always going to welcome you back. So hopefully by next this time next year, we'll have you back on the show. Uh, you, you and I are having a drink in New York. Well, trust me, I want that because we actually have a hotel that is supposed to open in New York in a couple of years. Which one? Where? Uh, it's in the Tribeca uh, neighborhood. It's going to be... Uh, of course. Uh, hunt, uh, room hotel and it's going to be a uh, through management contract and you go ahead so I, definitely I, come back. I, I was just going to ask another question but not about the new york hotel anthony so how are you seeing groups and meetings over in france uh in europe are you still are people still holding company meetings in your hotel no they're not happening okay that, that's actually uh we had a good summer in the hotels i mentioned but now that we enter in a period where you usually have a lot of mice and, uh, and uh, corporate meetings, uh, we anticipate like at least a 50% decrease uh, compared to last year. And uh, the mice segment um, is around 30% of our, of our uh, hotel turnover. So um, obviously, we're going to be very impacted by that. Yeah, for sure. What has been your culture in your business like why should people tell tell do a little uh, commercial for your hotels when people travel through europe why should they stay at your hotels what's different between your hotels and say another four or five star hotel like the ritz or the four seasons why is you why are you different well i think what makes a difference is um our colleagues because um we have i have the chance to work with people who used to work with my grandfather and uh, i have numerous examples of of, of guests um, that used to come when they were a child and now they're coming and their parents. And so there is really like some kind of, uh, um, it's uh, some kind of 
care and uh, that's what i think our guests love the most about our hotels is the um the attention and uh, the attention to detail and the, the the desire to to satisfy um the guest uh, that is not we don't have standardized hotel you know so uh if a guest wants something our colleagues will do whatever they can to to make it happen i'm going to give you an example uh it happened in Cannes a few years uh, a couple of years ago i think i think it was actually american uh clients and uh their little um, girl um they, they left and the little girl had forgotten uh her doll and she was very very sad and um so and it was too late to get to the airport to give them the doll so what the gm uh did uh pierre louis renault at the majestic he actually took pictures of the doll in different situations like at the beach at the pool in the room and he was sending that to the parents so that they could show to the do little daughter that her uh, a doll was just having a, a bit extra vacation but that she was coming back to her very fast and and <laughs> i i think that's a wonderful example of how we try to uh please our guests in way that are not standardized but we try to really to adapt to their need you know right and you know what when you say that i almost get a tear in my eye because we all want to get back to that right we all want to get back to that ability to serve our guests to serve uh, our employees and right now we're all you know we're all kind of on lockdown even if you're not on lockdown you're kind of like we can only move as fast as the pack and right now the pack isn't moving so fast i'm taking my first air uh airline trip um tuesday i'm going out to vegas believe it or not uh, oh. show from vegas and uh they're opening up several hotels they just opened up their new football and not football like in europe but uh american football yeah. they opened up their new stadium right across from a couple of hotels where they're going to be opening at mgm so that's going to be exciting i'm really kind of um really crazy excited but also you know you, you, you got to take precautions my friends who are there are saying it's not the same which i don't expect it to be but uh it would be great to get on an airplane again chris yeah. are you traveling this week I'm actually traveling Tuesday as well. I'm heading your way. I'm going up to uh, Connecticut. We've got a groundbreaking for a new hotel, believe it or not, which is going to be great. We're, um, I can't announce it yet, but we've got a groundbreaking, which in the middle of all this, I think is awesome. The construction is going to get underway. It's fully funded. It's a great project. And I'm excited to get back on a plane and get going and, and seeing people, even though it's going to be a small group. Uh, I'm mean, just excited to give a jolt to the industry and get some things moving forward because it's it, been nothing it, but bad news. So, is it a new client or is it a? Um, uh, uh, it's a client. It's a client. We've been working on the design and the whole process. You'll when you see it, it's a very interesting project. It's going to be a big splash. So, a branded uh, hotel. Uh, it's a soft brand. So okay, all right, all right. That's all I, I can I, say. That's all I can say. I'm trying to get out. Of it. So, Alexander, what do you want people to know about your hotel? This is the time of the show where you can give us a big plug for your uh, for your hotel and for your group. And thanks for reaching out to us. I know your PR people reach out to us to be on the show. So, thanks for. Do you guys watch the show a lot, or have you been following us? Well, thanks for the opportunity. Yes, yeah, since I, I uh, obviously since I was glad to uh, got invited, mm -hmm. I uh, watched some of your shows. Mm -hmm. And um, well, as I think the reason people loved our hotel before is even stronger now because, as I mentioned, it's about the connection with the guest, the emotional attachment, the emotional connection. And we've seen that now it's more important than ever. I mean, we've seen how uh, technology has helped us to communicate, particularly in this in this time. But it, I think it has also showed us how uh, uh, as how it was not enough because we are we need to connect like with in real life with other people and so i think that the fact that we have such amazing colleagues like the example i i gave you is an illustration um is probably one of the biggest reason people like hotels and we like them even more is because they come here and they always uh they're always happy to see our our colleagues there is really it's really something you rarely see that this um, connection between our clients and our and our colleagues and also i should i should also add that we have really historical hotels like uh, in deauville they were built in the 19 uh, in the 1912 then in the 20s uh, the same in la Baule. so in so in those destinations we have the best 
absolutely the best spots uh, in Cannes as well. I mean, I don't know if you've been to the International Film Festival, uh, but the Majestic is the um, is the first one on the Croisette, the best location. So also, I think uh, I think it's an, uh, the founder of an American uh, hospitality company who said location, location, location. Yeah. And uh, I think we, and even in Paris, we we are at the corner of Avenue George, George V and Champs Elysees. So I think we what distinguish hotels as well is the fact that they have amazing locations. What an impressive company! I, I do have a, a question before you go. I saw the fun fact about that when in 2007 you got to race go karts against Michael Schumacher, and I wanted to know how that turned out for you. Uh, well, it was my. And still is my idol. I used to watch Formula One all the time and got stressed. And uh, how did it turn out? Well, are you surprised if I tell you I lost? <laughs> uh, but I can tell you, I remember very well that moment. Like it was like a team race, and uh, I jumped into a cart, and then I start driving, and then I look behind me, and I see a red helmet, and it's my idol for since I'm very young, and I, I. It was very, very emotional. I remember it very well until that day. That's what a great memory. Yeah, definitely. You're, you're muted, Anthony. Thank you, Glenn. Um, so so <laughs> that's Glenn's job usually. Um, so so you beat him, right? No, I, I know you didn't. So real quick question. This actually coming from our producer, Dave. Um, have you traveled around Europe? Have you been traveling around? Have you been going around to the hotels? Uh, I've been to Portugal in uh, in July. Uh, I was uh, also um, impressed by the sanitary measures that that, that put in place. Uh, each time you went to a restaurant, you had to uh, wash your hand with a um, lotion. Uh, you were you had to wear a mask all the time. So the what I saw is were measures that were quite similar to what we have in France. Yeah, I see Portugal's numbers have really stayed pretty um, pretty stagnant. They had, I'm trying to pull it up right now, uh, as of yesterday, at 623. So it's been basically gone up a little bit. But it seemed like all of Europe, as I looked this morning getting ready for the show, that everyone kind of peaked all of a sudden last week, and then everybody started going down again this week. Um, but it's just fascinating how they, they kept it um, pretty controlled for a long time, but then it went up, and now it's coming back down. So um, hopefully we'll, we'll um, you'll be able to keep it down, and hopefully we'll all see each other very soon here in New York. I'm really curious of that hotel that's opening Tribeca. It's one of my favorite areas. Uh, are you familiar with the Nomad in um, in downtown New York? I am. I am. Yeah, that's uh, that's my favorite hotel. Matter of fact, when everything's normal, I'm probably there five days a week. Uh, really. Yeah, I usually have all my breakfast meetings or at the Nomad. It's my favorite. And the Virgin Hotel is opening right across the street. Yeah. For, for if they ever get that thing opened. Oh, got to so check that out. Do. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. I wish you could be That's walking nice. around France right now and, and showing us how beautiful it is. I know. I'll have to go to the film festival. I've, I've always wanted to go. I don't know if I ever have a reason to go, but, man, I'd love to go. Goodness. Well, you, you would have a great time. And what? find me a better reason. Yeah, for sure. You know what? Great to meet you. Uh, I'm going to hold you to that. So what you're going to do, Alexander, s send me your uh, – in the private chat, give me your yeah. phone number, and I'm going to send you a text or um, a message. And when uh, when uh, I have a reason to come, I'm going to stay at your hotel. Okay. I'll send you. We'll go you know, together, Anthony. We'll go together. Is it can or is it can? Everybody says it differently. Uh, in French, we say can. 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 Okay. All right. So whether yes. I – if we can, you know. If we can. Okay, I like that. So um, I have some friends that, that go there for movie premiere, so um, I will probably take you up on that um, offer that you haven't made. <laughs> sure, you are welcome, and I would be happy to show you and to introduce you to our colleagues, and you will see what I'm talking about. Cause yeah, I, I would love to. Maybe we'll do the show live from there. Yeah. That'd be great. All right. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. It was mine. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Okay, Bye-bye. It's really good to see um, different perspectives. And think about 83% of their payroll has been taken care of from the government. How yeah. much different would everything be, be if we, we had that kind of breath? But again, then everybody said, well, we're not a social, socialist country. We're in an emergency. If, if, if they did that for our, our, our employees and for our hoteliers, we'd be, I think we'd be in a little bit better shape right now. Yeah, I mean, the problem is, is what I've said so many times on the show before, is that, 
I mean, a lot of other industries are thriving right now in the U.S. Hospitality is the tip of the spear. And we're, I mean, at this point, all of my peer companies, us, I mean, we're pretty much at full staffing through the winter. So the, the unfortunately, the associates that have been laid off, they're out there fending for themselves with whatever the, either the government's got, because there's no business coming back. And as much as we worked, and you heard me early on say, we're going to do everything we can to get them back. I've got to have operational occupancy and revenue coming through the door to make it work. And so those, yeah, and those employees, the time you're ready to bring them back won't be around. No, I mean, they can't wait. And I understand that. We've been working with them, um, trying to help them with resources to find other things. We've, you know, on our, on our company webpage, which a lot of the managers have done, we have all the um, companies that are hiring and, and where they can go and if they need additional training, if we can support them through that. I mean, but but at a certain point, they've got to get something else because right now we just don't have the travelers, Anthony, to make it happen. So are you seeing the that whole um, summer traveler going away now? And are you seeing occupancies dip even more than they did, you know, maybe a month ago? There, You know, there is like if we were doing if we were doing no business travel rooms a month ago, now we're doing 20 a day. So there's there's a little bit of support coming from business travel because there are some businesses that are just like, we're going to get going. We have to, or else we're going to die. So we're seeing a little bit of that, um, but we're still running the same occupancy numbers. We're very close to the numbers we ran in July and August. So, um, and I don't see it changing. And of course, in our industry, other than a few locations, winter is soft everywhere. So we're getting ready to go into the most difficult part of the year for most hotel operations other than snow resorts. And we're going to be struggling. You know, it's going to be hard. It's going to be interesting to see New York during the holidays uh, this year. Um, the Rockettes, the tree, you know, New York is the epicenter of the world during the holidays. Mm -hmm. And it, it's interesting. It's going to be interesting to see how, how, how we go. And I'll tell you, I went to New York a couple of weeks ago, um, actually a week ago, just to see how my, my, beautiful lady was doing and uh it's holding on you know it's it's doing its best uh there are restaurants the, the streets are busy uh in so, some areas in new york city um so we everybody listen at this point everybody's holding on doing the best they can yeah there was a comment earlier uh on the comments during when we were talking to alexander i, I kind of wanted to address it um so this is joe harper he says i own a small business and i've not got any help maybe you owners need to take a pay cut or maybe you need to do some work instead of expecting everyone else to do your dirty work. Hey, Joe, I, I will tell you, I'm a partner in a small business too, and uh, all of us are struggling. Every single one of the partners in my business took massive pay cuts. All of the executive team and our, our whole team is still on pay cuts. Um, we're a small business just like you are, maybe different scale, but I can tell you that all of the people I know that are in this industry, all the owners have taken massive pay cuts almost to the negative quite frankly i just want you to know we're all in this together and i know sometimes it's tough feeling like you're on an island but i would recommend that you get with somebody who's had some success in getting some ppp assistance or find a regional bank because there is still money out there um, and get or an eidl loan but there are things that can be done and take control of that situation you know I, I, my email is available if you need some counsel i'm happy to give some feedback but i do want you to know we believe we're all in this together. And just because Anthony and I are talking on this podcast doesn't mean times aren't tough. Times at Chesapeake are tough. And I'm sure at Hospitality Success and other things, they're tough. Mm -hmm. um, hospitality is having success just simply because I have a mindset that allows me to, to think that way. But things are tough everywhere. And, you know, I also say um, that that's a mindset thing, right? It's like, well, the owners and the managers are not – digging in they expect us to do the dirty work just those words you were very nice chris and i appreciate how you handle that you handle that beautifully but i think that that's also a mindset issue you know yes there are some owners and owners that and, and and operators that were not nice before covid are not going to be nice during covid they're not going to switch all of a sudden they're going to fake it because they need maybe you to, to to work harder um, but at the end of the day, those people that you want to work around and people that are hard workers are working their butts off. So maybe if you feel that way, maybe it's, uh, it's, maybe you need to change because maybe the people you're working for, you don't respect, and maybe you need to be around people that work hard and, and, and do respect. So, so maybe those people don't work hard, but, um, uh, the vast majority of people, we're all just trying to do what we can to, to get through this. There's not a person, I don't care, uh, where you are on the food chain. There's not a person that's not that, that's not hurting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I certainly understand people um, that have that have stress, and that's like 
Um, John says, you know, it's a stress comment and I totally get it. I mean, we're all under tremendous stress. As a matter of fact, I've been really following the CEO, uh, Gary Bernison of Corn Ferry, the consulting company. He's done some great blog work and the, the blog, they put out a piece last week about burnout and, uh, you know, that people are going through burnout now. We're six and a half months into this thing. And even though we're not traveling like we used to and we're not, it's actually more of a burn factor than it was, quite frankly, when we were doing our thing, Anthony, because we weren't, we're not getting filled up with what we need. Like you said, we're not seeing people. We're not talking to the team. We're not encouraging and making deals. So um, it's it's that burnout leads to stress comments and stress behavior. And it's something that's real. As a matter of fact, we are really pushing our benefits that we have in our company that have people that our team can talk to if they need to. If you're stressed out and you feel alone and the kids are driving you crazy because of school, I mean, we need to be caring for people because it is hard out there. That should be the priority. And not only a priority is like, hey, we have this on this checklist, maybe you should call them. There should be meetings and there should be uh, weekly or monthly, you know, or biweekly meetings where people are just really kind of stressing um, actually, we're going to have somebody on the show uh, talking about mental health issues because I think that's where we are. We're at a point where I'm seeing people around me where people are, you know, people are fragile. And as far as burnout, you know, my my wife is teaching pre-K from home. Well, uh, now try to treat, treat, you know, keep three year olds busy on a computer from home, and they have like five minute and ten minute, mo you know, through the day. So maybe total they're on an hour. But the work she's doing, I've never seen her. Like she, she says, this is 10 times harder than being in the classroom. And, you know, you can see that, you know, if, if it doesn't get better soon, you can see her burning out or it, myself, you know, being here and not getting fed. That's why I'm looking for going to the valley. It feeds me, you know, being in, in hotels and, and being around that energy helps feed me. And I'm seven months in and I'm, uh, I, I wouldn't say I'm burnt out simply because I'm really trying to take care of myself, but uh, I definitely feel the effects of it. And I said to myself a couple weeks ago, I said, self, you said, yes, Anthony. And he said, um, are you burnt out? Like, dude, you've been here before you feel burnt out. What's going on? And like, Oh, I am burnt out, but I'm just burned out in the monotony of everything that's happening because I'm an energy guy, right? I just spoke yeah. to a guy I haven't spoken to in 25 years yesterday who used to be my engineer when I was in the night shift in the city at the Embassy Suites. And, and he said, you're like the energizer buddy. And he goes, you you know, I, I still remember that. Like even back then when you were in your 20s, you had all this energy. So it's really difficult to contain this energy and I need I need to release it by by traveling. So hopefully we'll we'll all be traveling soon. Here's yeah. the here's the link from Corn Ferry article on burnout. Why don't you um why don't you put that on there, David? Um, I don't like when I don't have control. Dave's got control. Did and, and if and if you guys don't follow Corn Ferry, they do a lot of great leadership and thought pieces. Very very smart people. Of course, they're a consultant, but they the, the work they do is very impressive. Well, I will tell you this: I did. I got one job or one interview from Corn Ferry, and they did a predictive index on me. Uh, the best one I've ever had. The, I can't remember the young lady who I worked with. Um, she was actually on my show. I had I brought her on my show, um, but they're very thoughtful and. Whereas a lot of the other headhunters or executive search firms, they're looking to, to there's a price tag on your head, and that's how you feel. Like th this executive search firm is the best I've ever worked with. Yeah, well, uh, Shelly, that's a great comment. I completely agree with you. Um, none of us are that really love this business are demotivated to work. It's sad, and I don't, I don't, I, I, I believe that there's millions like you that want to get back to doing what we love, Anthony and I included. And it's, it's hard when our industry is such a carve out from what's going on in the rest of the economy. And we've got to keep, you know, and I think uh, Anthony, isn't Chip Rogers from AHLA on, on Monday, I believe. I believe so. Uh huh. So I think you'll hear a lot, Shelly. You should tune in on Monday and hear from Chip Rogers. Chip and his team are, are crushing it. They are being the face of our industry on Capitol Hill. And they have all the salient points about what is going on. How you know, seventy-four percent of the people that are out are not going back. I just saw that statistic come out, uh, hospitality workers this year, and that's that's just brutal. It's just not fair to our industry. And um, if you know, I talked to an owner this morning, and it's not like anybody did anything wrong. That's what the most difficult part about this. We were all doing great. I was going to tell you, Anthony, we had uh, our quarterly board meeting yesterday, and we reviewed our minutes from our February board meeting. So this is just before everything went down. And I can tell you reading those board minutes was we were on fire. Chesapeake was our company. And I think a lot of other companies were too. All the development deals we had, the new business, the 
uh, open hires we had for the corporate office, and then it all changed. And so when I was talking to the team, I said, we can take this two ways. And it's like Mike is saying on here, it's we can either take it and say, oh man, look at all we've lost or what's changed. Or we can say, we were that company once, nothing's changed. We are going to be that company again. I take it like you, Anthony. I'm not gonna look for the negative. I'm gonna look for the positive and motivate and motivate ourselves to go forward because this is just a bump in the road. It's a big one, but we've got to get through it. This industry is not going away. Well, this is how I look at it. Maybe this I shouldn't talk about this, but this is how I look at it. Um, I, how many days do I have left if I live to 85, right? So say, <laughs> yeah. So 10,000 days or whatever, how many days it is. That's it. That's in my basket. That's in my basket. There's a basket of days. And so here's your basket. And every time you open your eyes, you're taking one more day out of your basket. You, I want to make all those days, those 10,000 days, as positive as possible. And some of those days are going to be horrifically hard. Um, and some of those days are going to be beautiful. And I don't get to pick and choose sometimes which days are which. And so you ha I have that mindset of I've got a basket full of days. And the more I take out of those baskets, the less I have in that basket. So I'm not going to wait till I'm 75 or 80 years old to to review my life and say, hey, you know, I should have, I would have, I could have. I should have appreciated this. I should have appreciated even the hard times. You know, listen, I have my family around me. I live in a nice house. I live in a nice neighborhood. You know, I, the lights are still on um, and I'm still paying my bills. And that's what you, you have. To, and if things are worse, and I've had situations in my life, that have been 10 times worse than the situation I'm in now. And um, it's same thing. I have a basket of days. I have a friend that lost his life to COVID. He, that basket has been emptied. It's gone. It doesn't belong there. So it's a mindset. It's 100% mindset. It's the way you ask that question. That's why I like the question that gentleman asked. But the question he asked was in the negative because he's in a negative situation around negative people. You know, I literally, I isolate myself from negative people. I run so fast. I'm <laughs> serious. I really do. And I'm really sometimes rude about it. Um, and people are like, well, what's going on? We're not hanging out. You're not calling me. You don't want to do business with me. You drop me as a client, whatever. It's like, dude, you're not in my zone. You're not in the positive zone. And, and again, that's not frivolous. That's not just talk. It's like, I'm hanging on. We're all hanging on. I don't need negative crap in my head. And I think yeah. really, I think that's a really important uh, thing that you said, Chris. I mean, I, I listen. I'm super passionate about leadership and developing and growing great leaders. I had some great people pour into me, and what I learned is is listen. There is no outcome in complaining. There's nothing good. It, it gets nowhere if you're not solution based, curious about how to get through this wall. I mean, there may be a brick wall in front of you, and right now it looks like there is a brick wall. But I'm thinking about ways to climb over, around, under, through. Yeah. And that's what you got to be as a leader. If you're going to lead people and whatever role you're in, in the hotel or your industry, you, you know, you lead, you may not think you lead, but, but just, you lead. But just as a parent or just as a friend, right. you're a leader. And listen, we always, we, you know, that old adage, like, who do you want in a foxhole with me? Right. Yeah. So we all have our people that we want in a foxhole. Why do you want that person in the foxhole? Because we're not sitting in the foxhole going, this sucks. This, <laughs> is not about the enemy. this sucks so bad. You're in a foxhole going, Hey man, how are you doing? Good. The Giants playing tonight? I don't know. Oh, by the way, how's your family? Good. Like that's that's the mindset that I don't. I, I you know there's a moment in time um, when I went in the military, the day before I went in the military, where I almost lost everything. I just was not in a good space, and um, I was just really, really desperate in, in many ways. And I went in the military, and the military filled me up because the military gave me small tasks and gave me a lot of confidence. And I was reading through some of my um, reviews uh, the other day when I was going through my garage. And all my reviews back then are the same review that you might give me today. That he gets stuff done. He doesn't take crap. He moves really fast. He talks really fast. And he works really, really hard. So when I was 20, it's the same thing as I'm 55. And I'm probably more energized now than I was when I was 20. It's a mindset. And it doesn't mean life doesn't suck sometimes. But that's where we are right now. You have to take control of your mindset. And if you need to talk to a therapist, if you need to talk to a friend, if you need to, 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 to tap out for a week and just say, I'm going to sit in my bed for a week and eat bonbons, then that's what you need to do. If that's going to get you back to full recovery, you need to do whatever you need to do to take care of yourself. And that's one of the things I'm trying to do more and more, especially in my personal branding book that's coming out, is I'm just trying to let people understand, look in the mirror, this sucks. What you're going through sucks. 
feel I'm learning that through with my children. It's like I'm trying not to fix all their problems. I'm trying to let them go through that area of that this sucks, whatever it is, not just COVID, but and that to me is critical for us to get through this. Yeah. I I mean I think what you said is exactly right. And I think that one thing we need to learn as leaders and also and, and friends and coworkers is sometimes you don't have to necessarily try and teach, you know, teach somebody or, or pull them up out of it. You, sometimes you need to walk alongside them when things are tough, because as far as I know, I mean, I've driven from here to, you know, Houston, Texas on I-10. I-10 is pretty flat, but there's still valleys and mountains on I-10, not any mountains, but hills. And that's how life is. You're going to go through them and you need people that understand and want to walk alongside you and not commiserate with the negative, but just say, hey, we're going to come out the other side of this. And that's what I mean, that's what we're doing as a company. I was talking with our SVP of operations and sometimes we just say, man, this is horrible. It sucks. It's just a truth. It does suck. But you know what? We're going to come out because we're well, fighters. And I think what Mike says, I, I love that comment. I asked uh, David, our producer, to put it back up. Negativity is more contagious than COVID. Yeah, it's absolutely true. And what's interesting is I'm sometimes if I'm around a negative person, they are so uncomfortable around me. They are like you can literally see it oozing out of them. They're so they don't know where to hide. Yeah, because they're not ready to take that 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 step that they need to kind of start. I always talk about that twenty minute movie, twenty second movie in your head. They're not ch- trying to edit that movie. I'm always editing that movie. You know, if I start getting negative, I start editing my movie in my head. That twenty seconds, we talk to ourselves more than we talk to anybody else, and. They, they get so nervous because they're not ready to edit it. And sometimes I'll grab them by the throat, obviously not physically, and just kind of force them into, hey, this is a you problem. This is not a me problem or not an us problem or not a COVID problem. This is a you problem. And we've got to understand when it's a you problem and when it's uh, – because once you do settle, whatever happiness is, whatever success is, whatever comfort looks like to you, it's on quicksand. Everything's on quicksand because you make a left turn. You're like, oh, shit, that just changed. You know, and, and one of the things that I heard, um, and you, everybody knows I'm a big fan of, of listening to Joe Rogan. And one of the things he said that really stayed with me, and um, and I won't use the, the actual word, but he said, when someone has, when there's negative energy around me, I tell them, get that F away from me. Like, get that F and energy away from me. And that, it's like saving yourself. It's like, you don't want to fight with people. Well, that negative energy is fighting your positive energy. And so, you know, Life sucks. So what? You know, if your life sucks, you suck. And that's and that's one of the things that I keep. And again, I challenge myself, you know, when my life sucks and I'm like, shit, I'm really doing everything. I'm not doing things in a positive way. I'm doing things in a negative way. My life sucks. I suck. So COVID sucks, but doesn't mean my life has to suck. Yeah. You got to choose happiness. And have, it's so important to surround yourself with people who offer encouragement and support, but taking action is the biggest factor in moving out of a negative situation. Chris is absolutely right in finding solutions. Take positive action every day and change your mindset. That, you know, I, I'm really glad you, you said that because um, I didn't see the young lady's name. What was her name? Jean. Jean Shannon. You know, what, what, I, what I love about that is movement is really important. And that's one of the reasons I'm going to Vegas is because I need to move. I'm doing the show from there. and But that's taking action. And I'd say take massive action. Massive action isn't massive. Massive action for you could be one small thing. Like if you want to lose weight, you stop eating sugar or whatever it is. So when I talk massive action, massive action could be a pebble that has massive consequences to your life changing. And it's and it's that, you know, and I think it's that simple. And I think it's um, we can't look to the government. We can't look to anybody else. You got to look. And sometimes you just got to take, um, you got to calm yourself. One of the things that I find is in this situation is I'm actually calming myself more than I've ever had. I like my energy, but sometimes my energy is misplaced when you're, you're in a situation where you have no place to really uh, use it. Yeah. I think, I mean, honestly, Anthony, I, I think about you a lot because with your energy, I know how hard it is on me. I'm a people person. I need to be with people shaking hands, you know, high five and celebrating wins, whatever it is at the hotels. And for me, it's been brutal. So for you, it's got to be just, I'm excited to hear how you find the Vegas trip. I know you're going to be thinking about what's going on, but I hope you take a minute for yourself and just enjoy. Oh, I will. 
So. I've learned I've learned to do that. I've really learned to 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 smell the flowers. And I will tell you something. You're probably more of a people person than I am. I'm an energy person in the sense of I need to be around complicated things and I need to fix complicated things. I need complicated hotels. I never want to run one of your hotels because they run well. I need complicated things. I need your position because you're in a complicated position. The more complicated things are, that's why I love poker so much. The more things are complicated, the more energized I am, the more out of my head I am. And um, But I'm not a big people person like most people think I am just because I love being around people. I'm not that big of a people person. But um, I love the energy and I love, I love when people solve problems. I am probably yeah. addicted. I am probably addicted to creativity. Yeah. I don't think it's I, too much, but I'm addicted to creativity. I love when a small company, I see a small company change, like even, um, express by in, 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 uh, in, um, the airports, they're going to, they're basically changing their model to COVID testing. They're going to give you rapid testing. So you can go in there, pay, pay a couple of dollars and get your rapid test. I love the fact that they've changed their model to go through this process. I love, like, even when you see like kids on TikTok or whatever, selling t-shirts, I buy those t-shirts sometimes mm -hmm. and I put in the box just simply to, to support their business. Yeah. You know, I'll buy, actually, I just bought one from my friend Brian Newman, who is a unbelievable band leader and hopefully will be on the show again. And then actually, he's Lady Gaga's band leader. I just bought a show. I just bought a shirt from him on his website uh, just to support him. Um, I, I probably never wear it because of what it says. Um, because it says Brian Newman. He's a, he's a, you know, anyway, I don't want to say what it says, but it's appropriate when you know who he is. But if you, if I'm walking down the street, you may not think it's appropriate, but I'm doing it just to support people. And that's really, I am absolutely addicted to creativity. Yeah. Listen, um, I know we're going to be running up against time here. I just, I want, I mean, I want everybody to know that, that at least when I'm on and I appreciate Anthony having me on today. I mean, I love leadership. And I love our business, but not just in my in, in work, what I do for work, but I love it in everyday life and what leaders we can be in our communities and our families and our schools. And I'm positive influence. I mean, if you're going to spend time on this earth, make a positive impact, right? Do something that I don't I don't want to on my tombstone to say, oh, he, he was a good worker. I want a, a great father and a, somebody that cared about people and um, and I just think that if we take that approach to life in general, whatever your role is, then you're going to make a difference. You can lead people and be a, a, a shining star and a beacon of hope for people that really make a difference. And that's what I want to challenge you to do today. So, oh, Colleen, thank you for noticing, Colleen. Yes, I have. 30 pounds since COVID really? started. So, yeah. Really? I didn't know you needed to lose weight. I did. I did. I'd gotten a little bit... Uh, the travel, the travel 20 or whatever you want to call it, eat at night, rest, nice restaurants. So, yeah. But, uh, well, good. Congratulations. How are you doing that exercise or the I cut out sugar, Anthony, just to your point earlier, I cut out sugar and I'm playing tennis when I can now that they've opened up socially distant. It's interesting. You don't touch the other, uh, they use their racket and their, their set of balls. And then we use ours and don't make any funny comments about that. Anthony, I know you could. Uh, that's what I didn't say about the shirt. Cause the shirt was funny. Actually, it says he's, he's a trumpet player, so it says Brian Newman blows, and I'm like, oh, oh. but the um, but that's again getting back to, and I've talked about this before. Getting back to what I do, it's I was I was working out this morning. I just got a new mat from my garage. I emptied out my garage, and that's going to be my gym during the winter. It is to me for me, and I'm fasting. So, but I say I'm fasting and slowing. I fast and probably till three o'clock and then I slowly eat until 12 o'clock. <laughs> I haven't gained, I haven't lost any weight simply because I love sugar. So I have actually, I have a sugar problem. So I'm going to start reducing my sugar intake, but I haven't lost weight because I like sugar, but I, I, but I try to get it out of my system uh, by working out. Um, one of the things, Chris, you may not have seen the show yesterday, but um, I know this is a medical update on Anthony Mercury's eye. Yesterday, uh, my eye was basically closed. It was like this. And one of uh, our employ, uh, one of our fans, uh, said to uh, me, "Hey, you better get that checked out. It may be infected." And I started worrying. I said, "Yeah, maybe it's just not the dust I thought in my garage." Anyway, long story short, I actually had a um, piece of wood or metal, and see how quick David is if he can get it up on the screen uh, in my eye. Um, and so yesterday, I went in. The uh, uh, doctor took the piece of metal or wood out of my eye, gave me a contact, which I'm wearing right now. Uh, it gave me some uh, antibiotics for my eye, and uh, I'm all better. So when you're cutting wood or cutting metal, wear your goggles. 
Come on, do your safety goggles stuff. Here, here, oh. see, look, look at that spot. You see that spot? That's my Not that's, good. that's my eyeball. Thanks, Dave. Great job. And and that was a piece of wood in my oh. eye yesterday. Oh. So yeah. So I'm better. Thank you, everyone, for your nice wishes. Hey, Anthony, I have got some Go. meetings coming up. I appreciate the opportunity always to be with you, my friend, and learn from you. So thank you for having me sit in. All right, my brother. So uh, so uh, what is your sign-off? I'll do my sign-off, but uh, Glenn has his sign-off, his his, his uh, quote. So what's a great quote? What's, a, what's your favorite quote? Uh, what you, 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 you caught, I mean, my favorite quote, that's going to catch me off guard. Um, Okay, I'll say, uh, yeah, we just had it as a quote for our company last week. All failure is failure to, to adapt. All success is uh, successfully adapting. There you go. All failure is failure to adapt. All success is successfully adapting. Yep. Dude, I love that. I absolutely love that. I'm going to use that. Uh, you, if you see a quote, you may again see Chris Green's quote on my uh, page. I think I got it from somebody else, but it's a good one. So. Okay. Love uh, everybody watching. Thanks for uh, tuning in and listening to us. Thank you very much, Chris. And um, be kind to yourself. See you tomorrow.